So if you've been following along, I've been working on a scary story generator that helps content creators create headless videos for their channels. And I wasn't getting many users. I wasn't really getting that many conversions. People don't seem like they're too interested in it. But I think one of the biggest problems with this SaaS product is that it's very niche. It's like way too niche. And I don't think many people are very interested in making scary stories. And so a lot of the feedback I got was it's too niche. And that's something that I always had in the back of my mind of like I'm building something that's too niche. So I went ahead and cloned my entire code base into a new repo. I got it all deployed out, separate uh, deployment, separate Stripe account. And it's called thevideocrafter.com. So I spent some time just trying to uh, polish this up a little bit, make it look a little nice. I got a nice demo video that walks users through what it does and why they want to use it. I got some of the same content that you saw on the other landing page, but uh, it's a little bit pruned down, not as much stuff. Right now, I think it's like a six or seven out of 10, and I feel like I could try to spend some time to make it like a 10 out of 10. But the idea is exactly the same as Scary Story Generator. So you can come in here and you can go and create a story. And one of the things I added in that I think people would be most interested in is letting AI basically write the entire script for you and also creating the video for you. And I've been using ChatGPT to basically create some ideas for a marketing channel. At this point, I have like three other YouTube channels that I'm just trying to experiment with for headless content. This is the latest one that I've been working on. It's called Marketing in Minutes. And I have a bunch of scheduled YouTube shorts. So I have videos about marketing, how you can like, you know, create a newsletter, how you can increase your brand engagement with storytelling. And I'm basically using the video crafter exclusively to create this content and upload it to that channel. Now, I know this video isn't really coding related. Um, I'm just more like an update of what I'm working on. And I feel like my content on my channel has shifted a little bit more to like indie hacking. And I, I want to make sure I'm not losing my original audience, which is like people wanting to learn how to code. So I've been debating about making yet another channel where I'm just going to be making like marketing videos and just talking about SaaS products and indie hacking. And then my coding channel will be specifically for teaching how to learn Next.js, React, coding. So if you'd be interested in watching me on a different channel about marketing, let me know. Maybe I'll do that. I just don't want to pollute my current channel that's really tech and coding related with all this other stuff that people might not be interested in. So a quick video of what I have. So let's let AI write the story for us. Um, if you're super lazy at content creation and you just want to let AI do it. So what we could do is we can make a story about TypeScript. So why would you want to use TypeScript over JavaScript? So that's like the YouTube title. I could probably do a better job making a better title. And if I click on this template, it'll basically fill out a template that is geared towards making a YouTube short. So let's just go ahead and click Create Guided Story. This will take you to a prompt that allows you to basically use AI again to refine the story a little bit. Or you can manually do it yourself. If you're into actually doing work in your life, you could go in here and you can change stuff manually. But once the script is created, um, you can go ahead and just look at the estimated video length. The YouTube shorts have to be 60 seconds or less. And so let's just go ahead and create generate segments. And I'll say make a vertical video. And that's gonna go ahead and create all of the segments for the video. And one thing I'd recommend doing is try to split this up into smaller, uh, more, more images if you can, but we'll go ahead and just run with this. Okay, so we got some guy who's coding, coding, coding. Okay, so just some generic images. This is using Flux behind the scenes to generate these images. And you can come in here and you can like change uh, the prompts and like make it actually more specific to something that you want. Um, every time you use an image generation, it's gonna cost you a little bit of credits. But overall, I mean, this is probably good enough. So let's just go ahead and kick off this video. And uh, you can select a couple of different names. Okay, so like we're just going to go ahead and use the default and I'm going to include a watermark to get a discount. All right, so now that's kicking off a video generation process. All right, so now the YouTube short is done. You can just go ahead and like scan through this real quick, make sure it's good. Another thing I added in was I noticed that it was hard to read the subtitles. And so when the word is being read out, it's going to put this blue background behind the word. My TypeScript might be the solution you've been searching for. And then I also kind of shortened it up because before with the scary story generator between every segment, it added like a fake delay to like make it more drawn out. But for YouTube short, like you want this to be quick, right? So I went ahead and just removed that little fake delay between segments and this is what we got. And that's the update. Now this is a coding channel and I figured let's talk about something coding related to maybe figure out how some of this stuff was implemented. So let's just talk about the let AI write your story. Basically what I'm doing is when a user enters in a prompt, like a title, 
and they click on this YouTube short template. Let's look at the code real quick and try to figure out what this is doing. So let's go to this. And here's a button right here inside the card. And when they click on this button, it calls this method that basically generates a string and replaces the form description value. I believe I am using React hook form and it's just keeping track of the form state in a title and a description. So you see here, I basically just say, hey, overwrite the description using the title that's already typed in. And this is the YouTube short template is how, is how that kind of works. They can say my title and you'll see my title show up. So let's look at the next part. How does this actually work behind the scenes? Let's click on generate guided story. So we'll go up here and when you click on the submit button, it calls this and then it calls a method called generate guided story. Now I'm using convex for the backend, which this is not a sponsored video. I'm just letting you know that I use this for a lot of my services because it just helps me move so much faster as an indie hacker. And it's like a lot of stuff that I don't have to worry about anymore. Uh, such as like file storage and having a UI that's synced to my backend data. But this calls a method that's on convex. And if we look through this code, like let's try to figure out what this is doing. So the first thing that we do is we first make sure the user is authenticated. So we get the user ID. If it's not existing, we throw an error. So then we consume some credits. Everything in this application uses a credit-based system. So every time you touch OpenAI or you touch Replicate, it does use some of your credits. And that's A, to make sure that the user doesn't abuse my system. There's different approaches I could have done, um, but ultimately you have to limit how many times they hit open AI or they're going to run up your AI bill and it's going to cost you a lot of money. So whether that you have a subscription-based service and you give them X amount of requests or uh, generations a month, that's an approach, but then you're going to end up adding credits anyway because there's going to be users who are going to be power users who need more credits. And so then you end up having to have like a multi-tiered subscription service and they upgrade their subscription, they get more credits every month, it just feels extra complicated versus like, just give a user the ability to pay for what they want. Okay, so if they run out of 6,000 credits, they come in and they buy some more. Now, maybe that's a bad idea from a marketing SaaS perspective. Maybe a monthly subscription will be better from my standpoint because I get their credit card and they get them locked in and they keep on paying every month and they forget about it and I keep on getting an income from it until they decide to uh, unsubscribe. But that's the approach I'm taking. It worked pretty good for my other product, uh, Icon Generator. So the way the credit system works is I'm using Convex mutations. Now, one thing that's good to point out is that a mutation in Convex is ACID compliant. So this runs as an atomic transaction and it's going to basically throw an exception if for whatever reason, the credits were to get reduced from some other process. So if they were to kick off like a bunch of different stories at the same time, there's no race conditions because these all run sequentially behind the scenes with the convex database. And if the credits ever get underneath the amount that I'm trying to use, they'll just start throwing exceptions and the user won't be able to use those credits. Okay, so after we verify that they do have enough credits and that they have enough for the amount we're trying to use, we just decrement the credits with that amount. And then we start going on to the fun part. So the fun part is we create a story object in our database. Pretty straightforward. We keep track of the story and the status of it. And then we call a generate guided story action. Let's check this out. This is where we're using AI for the first time to take in whatever they added in that prompt. So if I go over here, what they typed in this prompt description, that gets sent over here. Okay, and what we do with that is we tell AI, you are a professional writer tasked with creating a short story with a voiceover based on a given description. The story should be a story that is 10,000 characters max in length. Do not title any segments. Just return the text of the entire story. This is for voiceover. Only include the spoken words. So I had to add all this weird stuff because sometimes AI would just return like, like an acting script. So it'd be like actor one feeling scared and then it would say like they're their prompt or their script. And it's like, dude, I don't need like an acting script. I need an actual like voice to text transcript or something like that. But anyway, I get the response back. And then what I do is I basically just get the content. So this is like the weird format that OpenAI SDK gives back. They give you back a string and I use that string to update the story script. So if we go here and just check over that's being ran, we just patch the story and we save the script directly in the story like that which took us to the next page where you can then use AI to refine the script and then you can generate all your segments. So let's talk about how I do the whole section of like refining the story and um, finally generating everything. So when they submitted the form, like you remember the text area they had where they can like manually edit, 
I'm too lazy to go back. So let's just look at the mutation that this calls when you, you know, say everything's good. So we call another mutation and this has a little bit of authorization set in place because we need to verify that the user trying to call this has access to the story ID. So I have like this helper function where you pass in the context and the story ID and it's going to return an object that could potentially be undefined. And if it's undefined, we throw an error saying you don't have access to edit this story. And then what we do is we consume some more credits. All right. And then we kick off a action. So this action is where the fun stuff starts to happen. Basically, I take the, the script that they put in and I split it by paragraph tags. And then for every paragraph tag that they find, I create a segment for that. So if they have like 10 different paragraphs, I create 10 different segments. And this is going to do a couple of things. This is where like the, the core logic of this application kind of comes in. So I create a segment in my database. And then I consume some credits before that segment starts creating like the images. Um, and then I call something called replicate, which is a backend service um, to basically use AI to generate images. And so I use OpenAI one more time to basically say, hey, take the, the text that's in the story. So if I go over here, this is like the text set of the segment. And I say, take the text of the segment and also use the context up here. So I have like this edit image context. This is something that's used for the entire image generation process that's used in combination with this. So I use those two things and I say, hey, OpenAI, give me a, a little prompt I can use to basically start generating images with. And then I get the prompt. And then down here, I kick off a replicate. And then over here using the prompt, I kick off another action, which is going to call replicate with that prompt. So this is just doing some more, you know, get some data, check to make sure it exists. But the fun part is down here, we call replicate over here and I'm using Flux Chanel. And I basically take the prompt and I pass it to replicate and say, hey, I need you to generate an image using this prompt. And give it a little bit of options over here to know if it's vertical or horizontal. I'm doing some logic here to scale down the image and like then I finally store it into convex storage. And then I do some more stuff and some more stuff. And then I send that back to the user. So that's that's how it all kind of works. Um, but I have a bunch of different like actions that we're doing. Uh, so if you look at this whole app, I mean, it's it's pretty feature complete. I mean, we have a lot of features in here. We even have the ability to like review a story, fix grammar, read the full story here, copy to the clipboard. Uh, you can actually clone the whole story if you want to convert it to horizontal. You can do that. And then finally, you can generate the video with different voiceover text and then like some flags that get sent. So that's basically how some of the internals work on this application. At this point, I think it's good. I mean, like, I just need to figure out how to get users to use this because I've been using it for my own stories. And I mean, like, it's it's good. It can make some pretty good stories without you having to put in much work. And now it's just a matter of, like, finding real users who would be interested in using this. Um, so, yeah, if you are interested, go check out the videocrafter.com. You'll get a couple of free credits when you first sign up. And if you're interested in, you know, trying it, you like it, give me a testimonial and I can put it on my landing page. I'm just trying to look for a couple of real life users who might want to try this out so I can help shape this in a better direction. All right, that's about it. Have a good day. Happy coding.